January. Cold, damp and miserable. Not the best time of year for a breakdown. Now it's been a long time since I had a breakdown where I've had to walk home and push a car. Yesterday was one of those days. Now as you can see, there's a cable running into the bonnet of the Corsa where the battery is currently on charge. It's absolutely freezing out here so I'm going to jump in the car and uh, we'll let you know what happened yesterday when it broke down. Now, despite its past history, the course has one of those cars that always starts and always gets you where you're going. It hasn't been well looked after in the past. Pretty much everything on it that is serviceable is still date coded 1994, so previous owners haven't done anything with it. The current owner is slowly working her way through it to try and bring it up to scratch and make it look nice. And it will eventually, at some point, obviously be getting painted so it's all one colour and it doesn't have the blue doors on it anymore. Anyway, thought of the car yesterday afternoon. Everything was fine, fired up as normal. I got just around the corner from the house and it just kind of spluttered and coughed and then died at the side of the road. So I tried starting it again a couple of times and it wasn't having none of it. It was turning over fine, it just wasn't starting. So I pushed it home and as usual, didn't have a camera with me, didn't have a phone with me. So I had no way of recording it so that you could all enjoy it yourselves watching me trying to push a car home on my own. Managed to get it home, got it, uh, managed to get it back in the drive. Uh, turned it over a couple more times and it still wasn't starting. Now some of you out there watching this will already know, but for those who don't, when you're driving a car and it breaks down, there's one of two reasons it'll break down. It's either a fuel problem or it's an electrical problem. Now if the car cuts out or stalls when you're, uh, when you're busy driving it, if all the idiot lights on the dashboard come on and the thing dies, then it's more than likely an electrical problem. If it coughs and splutters, then it's a fuel problem normally. So based on the way that the car actually broke down or the way it stopped, I was figuring it's a fuel problem. There's only a few things that can cause a, a splutter to a halt at the side of the road. Usually out of petrol, but there's about half a tank of petrol in that in there, so it's not out of petrol. Could be a problem with the fuel pump, could be a blocked fuel filter, it could be a blocked fuel hose, or it could even be a damaged fuel hose and the petrol's leaking out somewhere at the side of the road. After I managed to get it in the drive, I had a quick look underneath. There was no sign of any fuel dripping anywhere. It stood where it is now overnight, and there's no puddle of fuel underneath it at the moment. So I'm confident in the fact that there's not a fuel leak anywhere, which narrows it down a little bit. Uh, so it could be a block fuel hose, a block fuel filter, or it could be a dead fuel pump. Now, for those of you that don't have much experience with fuel pumps, the, the way they work is in pretty much the same way as anything else. When they're working properly, they like to be kept cool. So when you've normally filled your tank up with fuel, your fuel covers the entire fuel pump and this helps keep the fuel pump cool while it's pumping fuel up through into the engine. If you're one of those people that runs around and you fill your car up once a week or every couple of days and then you run it until the warning light comes on on the dash until it's nearly empty and you go and put more fuel in, what's happening there is as the fuel drains down in the fuel tank and exposes the fuel pump inside the tank, the pump itself can get warm and heat up so much that it does start to break down a little bit and it doesn't work as well as it would do if it was kept cool all the time. So theory has it that sometimes it's a good idea to keep the tank topped up to the point where the pumps are always covered with fuel. Obviously that's not always feasible with the amount of money it costs these days to put fuel in a car and, uh, and the way life is at the moment. So people just use the cars and they forget it, they don't realise about the fuel pump and just forget about the fuel pump until it's too late and it breaks down. But there is a test that can be done, especially at this time of year, that doesn't take anything, any money at all, until uh, other than a little bit of work and a little bit of time spent with the car in the garage or in the driveway, wherever the car is. Now, in the middle of winter, as you know, and pretty much everybody knows, all car batteries do take a hammering with how cold the, the temperature is. And on top of that, when you're driving the car, sometimes your lights are on, your wipers are on, your heaters on, your demisters on, you may have the radio on, you've got your heated rear, rear screen on, you've probably got your heated seats on if you have them in the car. All this takes a toll on the battery at this time of year when it's already feeling not the best due to how cold the weather is. So when I started the car yesterday, it was a little bit sluggish with turning over. Obviously, I didn't think anything of that because it did fire up. So theory has it that if you charge the battery fully, so the battery's fully charged, and then you try and start it, it may well start up. Now, this isn't a permanent repair, so don't go thinking I'm telling you how to fix a car when uh, and get the car running permanently again if there is an issue with the fuel pump. This is just a temporary measure. Normally, what you would do with this if you broke down at the side of the road or you broke down somewhere and you suspected it was a fault with the fuel pump and you maybe your battery was a bit low, if you have a jump pack with you or if you have jump leads and you can get a, a jump start of someone, sometimes with the extra power going through the battery, the car will start even though 
it could have a bit of an issue with the fuel pump. If it starts, fingers crossed, it will get you home or at least it'll get you to a place of safety off the side of the road if you're sitting somewhere that you, you don't really feel confident in having the car parked where it is. So what I'm doing at the moment, I've got the battery charger on the battery of the Corsa and it is charging so the battery was a bit low and I'm going to charge it up till it's fully charged and then I'm going to try and start the car again. If it does start and there's no problems at all, then it could have just been one of those things where the, the, the fuel pumps have not had enough power from the battery to keep it running properly in order to get the fuel pump through the, uh, to the engine bay. Like I say, this is just a theory, and if it does work, this is purely just a temporary measure, uh, but we'll see if we can move it. I'm not going to risk taking it out very far. I'm just going to move it up and down the driveway a little bit just to see if it, uh, if it recreates the same thing it did yesterday where it cuts out when, uh, when I'm trying to drive it a bit. So, it's as I say, it's currently on charge. So um, my battery charger has the facility of a fast charge, so I've got it on fast charge, I'll leave it on there for about an hour, and then once that's done, we'll try the car, see if it starts. If it still doesn't start, then obviously I'm going to have to investigate the possibilities of a clogged fuel filter or a dead fuel pump. But thankfully, in this car, the fuel pump itself is relatively easy to change. The fuel filter shouldn't be too hard to get to because it's underneath the car, at the rear, somewhere around by where the fuel tank is, but we'll find that if we need to. So I'll come back to you once the battery's fully charged and we'll see if the car starts and we'll test that theory out before going any, uh, any further. Because obviously it's always a good idea to start with the free stuff or the cheap stuff and then work your way up to the expensive stuff. And hopefully in, whilst you're doing that, you'll find out what the problem is and you'll get the problem fixed. Right, so that's been on charge for an hour now. So I've dropped it down from fast charge to slow charge, moved the battery charger and the cables out of the way of the engine. And I'm gonna jump in and see if that solves the problem and see if that starts the car. As I said, this isn't guaranteed that it'll fix it, but if it was purely a problem with the power in the battery, this should start the car. If not, then it's probably definitely an issue with the fuel pump. I can go and get the fuel pump replaced, but for now, let's give this a try and see if it starts the car. Fingers crossed. Well, as you heard, it definitely coughed there, so I think it could be a problem with the battery rather than the fuel pump supply. Obviously, I will check out the fuel pump later on, but for now, I'm going to take the battery off, take it indoors, give it a good charge overnight, and we'll be back with another video tomorrow, and we'll see if that's made any difference. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll leave a link on the screen, and you can watch that video next.